There's a slow, creeping buildup of tension deep in your body. You know what you're seeing isn't real, but the overwhelming terror becomes so strong that you can't help but to look away, turn off a sound, or even walk out of the cinema. Everyone who's seen a horror movie knows this feeling. So how exactly are filmmakers able to leverage our own psychology against us and induce feelings of deep terror just by showing us a projection of 2D images in a cinema? In this video, I'll break down how camera movement and framing create scary images by going over the three stages of horror and analyzing some terrifying techniques used by cinematographers to create deep psychological dread. Horror films are a cinematic dance between cinematography and editing. Both have to align perfectly and support each other to produce terrifying visuals. Although it goes without saying that there are many different ways to approach creating a horror film, there are certain tropes which apply to most movies in the genre. One trope is how they are structured. I'd break down the structure of horror into three parts. Downtime, where there's no threat to the characters. Build up, where a sense of horror or anticipation of a threat grows. And finally, the scare. This cycle of downtime, build up and scare usually happens numerous times throughout a film. Of these, downtime is clearly the least frightening. This time is needed as a pacing device for the audience to take a breath and compose themselves before the next onset of horror. If a film is always scary, it'll either lose some of its impact or become overly terrifying and unwatchable. I would argue that the scare, what you expect to be most frightening, is in fact not as truly terrifying as the build up to the scare. Peeling a plaster off slowly, gradually, bit by bit, until you're begging for the director to just yank it off quickly, is far worse. This is the build up, true horror. Let's go over some cinematic techniques used in the build up, which create a terrifying effect. This classic trope involves cutting between a character and their point of view, or POV, usually as they're approaching a threat, which will lead to a scare. <gasps> to inject this moment with maximum anxiety and anticipation, a slow push-in or moving forward of the camera is used to mimic the feeling of someone moving closer. In Shutter, this very stable push-in is accomplished by using a dolly, which is set up on tracks and then slowly pushed by a grip during a take. The low to the ground push-in used to show the ominous light under the door could have been done different ways, such as with a jib arm or underslung on a slider. But the most common method is to first break the neck of the dolly, attach an extension bracket to frame out the tracks, and then use an underslung head, such as a cartoony lambda head, which allows the camera to be operated inches off the ground. In It Follows, the POV push-in is used often. In this scene, it's used in reverse as a pull back instead of a push in, but the effect is the same as the camera is reacting to the movement of the main character retreating from the threat. The camera here is a slightly less stable floating motion, which is trademark of using a Steadicam. This technique leverages a base psychological human fear we feel safe when we are protected by a physical barrier. This is one of the reasons people often position their beds, sometimes subconsciously, so that their back is against the wall and they're facing the doorway. From this position, we are able to see and deal with an oncoming threat. The invisible man takes this fear and translates it visually by using empty space. In this scene, the camera slowly pans and dollies around the empty space in the house before finally settling on our character. Again, smooth camera motion is used. Although some horror films use rapid handheld camera movements successfully in the build-up, I feel the style excels more during quick scares. Smooth movement is usually a more reliable method of gradually ramping up tension during the build-up. The slow movement of the camera, paired with the empty space in the scene, introduces a feeling of vulnerability, like an attack could come from anywhere. It Follows also uses this technique in its opening shot, where a wide frame pans around a suburban neighborhood, creating a sense of invisible danger. 
The film also uses background action and frames to build in a feeling of vulnerability. It may seem counterintuitive, but sometimes cutting to a shot without any threat can be terrifying. What we can't see is more scary than what we can. Building up a scene with off-screen sound design such as this scene from The Wailing and then staying on our main protagonist is fear-inducing. The character reacts to the threat, but we, the audience, are unable to see what is being reacted to. The camera remains still on a tripod, an objective. Unlike the POV push-in technique, where we cut back and forth between the perspective of the character and their point of view, in The Wailing, director Na Hong Jin often holds off on cutting to a POV scare shot until the last minute, building up tension before the cut. Us uses this same idea too, but in a different way. In this scene, director Jordan Peele frames the threat in the same shot as the character, but blocks the character so they are prolonged from seeing it. They use a stable, but more reactive camera, operated on a fluid head from a dolly, following the motion of the character. Just as in The Wailing, we, the audience, are begging for Na to cut to the POV shot of the threat. In Us, we desperately want the character to turn around. Both use this idea of the unseen threat to slowly build up more tension before the moment of the scare. The Invisible Man takes this a step further and literally creates a threat which we are unable to see. For a fight scene with an invisible enemy, DP Stefan Ducio employed motion control. A motion control rig, such as a bolt, is a robotic arm on a track that can move the camera smoothly on any axis. Software is used to track and program a specific move at a specific speed, which the rig can then replicate as many times as necessary, frame for frame, so that each move is exactly the same. This allowed the filmmakers to shoot one take with a man in a green suit attacking our character. Once they'd got the shot, they ran the same move again, without actors, to get a plate shot which is identical. In post-production, it was then easy to mask out the man in the green suit and replace the backgroundy blocks with the plate shot. The effect is a realistic feeling fight scene, where the character's performance and interaction with the invisible foe feel real. These three techniques form the basis for just some of the creative camera movement which can be used in horror films to amplify tension and terror during the build-up. Camera movement may serve as an important base for horror cinematography, but it's important to note that it's just one element. It takes a combination of lighting, performance, VFX, makeup, production design, music, editing, and many more elements to build up a high level of visual tension. To truly manipulate the audience's emotions, filmmakers need to add just the right touch of each of these carefully measured ingredients to achieve a deep, unsettling build-up to a scare. Thanks for getting to the end of this video. I'd be interested to hear other techniques you've found effective in horror films in the comments. If you'd like to support this channel further, you can find a link to the channel's Patreon page in the description. Until next time, Thanks for watching and goodbye.